All right, so now I will continue. And so of course, like I said before, this uh, session is going to be on how insurance works. And we have some great panelists here. I'm eager to hear how they're gonna answer these questions and I know that you're gonna learn a lot today. So just for introductions, we have Ms. Kimberly Plant. She is a strategy consultant with CUNA, CUNA Mutual, and then Mr. Reggie Wheeler, financial services manager and partner with Horace Mann. Let's give them a round of applause. All right, so for starters, let's talk about insurance in terms of what are the features, what are the key components of insurance? I'll take that first. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Kimberly. When we think about insurance, first and foremost, there's that perception that insurance is a waste of money. I want to dispel that immediately. So as you're listening, be thinking that insurance is a necessary part of life. And um, things happen unexpectedly. Life happens, and you want to make sure that you've protected those things that you've worked very hard for, those things that matter, and the people that matter. So I want to put that out there, and, and you want to make sure that the children understand that too, because they've probably heard along the way that insurance, oh, that's a rip-off, you're just paying money, you'll never get anything out of it. It isn't until you need that money <laughs> that you understand how important insurance can be. So first and foremost there. But when we think about some of the features and components of insurance, we can go very deep, we can talk for hours, and I'm sure y'all don't want to hear all that. But fundamentally, when you think of your insurance and some of the features, that premium that you pay, that's a, that's a feature of an insurance. That's the amount that is the cost for the coverage. You also have components such as the face value or the benefit that we pay out in the event you have a loss. That's another feature of insurance. Also, deductibles. You have to have a little skin in the game. There's a portion that you'll have to pay before or in conjunction with what the insurance company is going to pay. Those are a couple of key features. I'll give Reggie a chance to give you more. Thank you, thank you. So, again, the most important thing, like Ms. Kimberly was addressing, is the practicality of what insurance does. And let's see, we use a big time human life value. So it is looking to position you to replace the life impact that would be assessed in regards to if there was a situation that arose where you needed it. And we all can think of practical perspectives, scenarios that we know of, where we're saying insurance was the point in having, well, 2016 flood, right? So, and we live in areas, a lot of us, that you don't need flood insurance. And a lot of folks are like, oh, I wouldn't have that and don't have it. But if you had to go through the process of having your home, and you had to go through the process of throwing out all of your personal possessions that a lot of those things have personal memory, you know, that keeps saying things that you had, you can't necessarily place, re replace those memories and things like that, but the monetary value of those things, if you do not have insurance, a lot of folks aren't able to recover, and that's one scenario, but that is, we, we too many times dehumanize it and lose realistic aspect of what insurance does and it is to position you for things like that. When we talk about the unexpected scenarios, but that is giving you a face. That is giving you a tangible scenario of what it looks like when something happens. And that's where insurance, if you don't have it, it changes everything for you. Where there, there are some folks that possibly aren't able to recover from it. So that's where you have to look at it realistically. Yes, you have to pay them on every month. But the one time, the one time something happens, it well over can well over position you to not only recover but keep the same standard of living that you had prior to that situation. And that is the biggest thing: is keeping the same lifestyle, the same decision-making ability that you have when something unexpected happens. That's what insurance helps you. With. There's a, there's a saying that says, "If you can't afford insurance, you can't afford not to pay." So with that said, why is insurance called a risk sharing system? Well, as I mentioned before, there's a little bit of that give yet. When you think about risk and sharing and what the insurance company is going to do for you, as, as, as a consumer, as someone who is out here living this life, you want to make sure that you're taking every necessary precaution to minimize your losses. That's, you're, you're sharing that list, you're, you're trying to minimize the things that could happen. Well, life happens, things are unexpected, and so the insurance company, on the other hand, 
they're going to provide the protection in the event like those can be happen. You've done all that you can do to minimize those risks. Something still happens, then they'll come in and, as you mentioned, help you share the load and bring you back home. So there's that give yet is how I like to think of the risk sharing system. And, and Ms. Kimberly, you know, it, it, and I think in regards to honoring more numbers, now going back to looking at it from a monetary perspective, insurance companies are, they are trying to help you, but it's also just like if you go to your bank and you set up a CD, correct, they're trying to, they're trying to make a profit off of what they're collecting from the premiums, right? So if you go to a bank and you set up a CD at the bank, the bank is saying, okay, well, if you allow us to hold on to this $2,000, we are going to pay you 4% interest after two years. Well, they took that $2,000 and they invested that money to where they are making 6%. So they made 2% off of the money that you gave them and they gave you back four. The same thing is happening with the insurance company. They are going to take, utilize the money that they're getting off the premiums and they're making money off of it. So it's a, it is a, they're trying to help you, but you're helping them as well because they're making money off of the money and then they're, they're banking on hopefully not having unexpected circumstances to happen, so then that means they pocket more money, but then they position themselves to where if an unexpected circumstance does happen and they do have to honor your policy and pay out on it, they have that cushion to where they can pay out on that too. So it, it is a it is a help me help you. It's a help me help you scenario. So earlier today, you know, the topic was building a healthy credit score, right? And then it was followed by how we're going to use that credit score to get into debt with student loans. And in a perfect world, the government would wipe out all that debt. But we know that we don't live in a perfect world, and sometimes things happen and we become disabled. And so now I want them to talk a little bit about some of the different types of insurance. So can you explain to us what disability insurance is and how it can protect us? Regarding disability insurance, that's that coverage for those, uh, those times when you are not able to do the job that you would normally do. So, some examples of disabilities, some are seen and some are unseen. You know that if you see someone who has physically disabled, you can easily eyeball them and see that something's going on. But there are other types of disabilities too, such as mental disabilities, sight disabilities, hearing disabilities. All of that also could put you in a position where you're not able to do the job that you would ordinarily do. And a good disability policy or some coverage of that kind can help you replace income and keep you financially stable. Yes, and don't limit your perspective in regards to what you consider or what would be deemed as how you can utilize your disability policy. For example, mothers having children. If depending on how the policy is structured and depending on the amount of time you would have to be out, if you had complications from pregnancy, if you have um, the child has problems, if, where you are not able to resume your normal work schedule, those depending on how the policy is structured, that can also allow you to take advantage of short-term, short-term disability. Now, there's short-term disability and there's also long-term disability. Short-term typically is within 30 to 60 days in that range. Long term is anywhere 60 days beyond that, and maybe up to two to three years. It, it, it just depends. So you want to make sure every person's situation is different. So it's not cookie cutter. Income levels are different, age, health issues. But there's a number of different factors that weigh into how a disability policy is structured for you. So you make sure you sit down with a professional that can walk through what is needed for your family. The replacement income that's needed, and there's ranges of how the replacement income can factor in. There's ranges on how long you can wait until that policy starts paying you to replace that income level that you need for your family. So all of those things weigh in and can make things a little more affordable for you the longer you wait. If you start it to where the policy pays you sooner, it could cost you a little more, but that's where the importance of sitting down with a professional so they make sure they look at what is going to be best for you in that situation. Of course, working in the finance industry for many years, I've had clients walk in and say, I have a disability policy, I just got fired from my job. Is there a difference between disability insurance and unemployment insurance? Yeah. 
That is a great question. Yes, there there is a difference. So I just said, hey, there are things that could still qualify or count as disability that isn't necessarily like title of aid this of aid, you are disabled. Your loss of employment does not count as a disability. Now <laughs> that's a loaded statement, depending on what cause what cause what cause the unemployment. But then that could be a whole nother that could be a whole nother can of worms. But um, so there is there is a difference. Conventionally there is a distinct difference between what unemployment covers and what that means and what disability would qualify for. Typically you have two ways disability applies. You have group coverage that your employer will have a policy, just like group health insurance. They will have a group coverage, or you can have an individual disability policy where that is your, the sole, you establish the policy, and that's through directly with you and the insurance that the disability provider. Unemployment typically is going to be through the state or through your, your employer where how they would have you file that if you were trying to follow up to get unemployment if you did lose, lose wages. But those conventionally are two different things. I just wanted to feed back on something Reg was mentioning, and I want you to be thinking about it because as he mentioned, you can't paint a broad brush on what your insurance needs would be. So it is incredibly important, we can't stress it enough, to make sure that you're sitting down with a financial professional and understanding your unique needs, what it is that you're trying to protect, who it is you're trying to protect, what your budget can allow for, and then thinking about your lifestyle. There is no one size fits all, and I cannot say that enough. And that's another reason why people tend to think, oh, insurance is a rip off. Well, they may be paying for something that has no benefit to them because they took that broad brush, broad brush approach. So make sure as you're looking at your own personal financial situation, and when you're teaching the children, they have to understand everybody's situation is unique. Make sure you're addressing what matters to you. And so with that said, what are some other types of insurances that they should be considering and talking to students about? Well, we've talked about a little bit of it. Of course, they're going to drive cars. They're going to need car insurance. They're going to get sick. They're going to need health insurance. They're one day, hopefully, are going to buy a house. They're going to need homeowner's insurance. They, <laughs> this is going to sound bad, but as sure as you're born, you are going to die. They're going to need life insurance depending upon the types of lifestyles they lead. They may be very active, so the chances of getting hurt or becoming disabled is a thing. However, any one of us is one trip or fall or illness away from possibly becoming disabled. So those are some examples of that. I am uh, pretty, uh, my wheels are always spinning, so I think of a lot of different scenarios because of real life situations. So um, also things that folks this day and age, we probably deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and don't recognize all of us. Who has a phone? Yeah. Cell phone, right? And so you're thinking, oh, you need a phone insurance. Mm -hmm. Technically, but I wasn't going to go there. The, the bigger thing is identity theft protection. Your information that you're sharing, and if that were to someone were to get access to that, that is another thing to think about of how to mitigate rectifying or correcting, making sure that it doesn't continue if somebody gets a hold of your information as one. Another thing, unfortunately, we have to think about this day and age is, especially here in Louisiana, it's one of the highest ones, Blood. being sued. If, if you sued, so, 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 and what, what was it that? Blood. 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 Yes, yes, that, and, and, and flood insurance, yes, that's another one, that's a huge one, even if you're not in, in where you have to, but, for if, if you were sued, and, and that is actually, you would get additional coverage for that through your homes, or an auto, where you have your property and casualty. There's coverage in addition to what those face amounts cover, where you can get additional coverage to where if anything happened on your premises or your person, and you were, could possibly be held liable for any lawsuit, it will cover above what your coverage is face amounts of which coverage is offered you so then the person that is trying personal person is trying to sue you can't go after your possessions. So those are just top of the head a few additional ones that you would want to think about and, 
and way out if that's a reality for you. Question, ma'am. One thing that I um, I tell my students about is rental insurance because when they go and get those apartments, are they renting other people's property? So that's only thing that I let my students know about. Yes, yes, and thank you for that because that is another one that goes along. I guess it's on the same line as homeowners insurance. And, well, kind of hybrid homeowners and flood because of the effect of what water damage can do. Rent insurance can cover if things happen to your possessions when even though you don't physically own the property, the, the building, the domain, but the your possessions in there, rent can help with that too. So, you know. In keeping with our being just still picking back on credit, you know, we're teaching them about credit, but there's credit life insurance. How or why is credit life insurance beneficial to a person? Oh, I love that question. Credit life and credit disability, how many times have you gone to your financial institution, hopefully a credit union, but you've gone to borrow some money, they've asked you, would you like to protect this loan with credit insurance, credit life or credit disability? Again, as soon as you fall, we are going to die. And we have the potential to get disabled or become hurt and not able to work. The most important reason to protect those loans is not because the insurance company is trying to make money or trying to get something out of you, but think about it. We talked about credit all day long today. It is highly important if you borrow that money, the expectation is you're going to pay it back as agreed. Well, if life happens and something alters your ability to pay back, that's where that insurance will, will kick in and help you make those payments until you can return to work and until you can resume your payments. So protecting credit is a huge reason why you want to have credit insurance, credit life and or credit disability, or even unemployment protection on your loans. There's a couple other reasons why too. And, and Ms. Kimberly is good off for sure, but the big thing is to give you the practical thousand foot view and line up with credit. So if you are in a situation where you aren't able to make payments on your loan, that is directly affecting you and negatively. So even if it's a legitimate reason, if you don't have some type of protection, protection to prevent that, it will it's going to bring down your credit score. The more that, the longer that takes place, the worse of an effect it will have on your credit score. So that's why you, the name of the game, everything you're doing, everything you do, everything that this is talking about, everything that this applies to and how this impacts your kids is understanding how the decision making you have with your money affects you immediately and how it affects you long term. And you want to maximize what your money is doing for you, how it's going to best position you right now, this month, Three months from now, how is it going to affect me two years from now? How is this going to affect my kids? What am I going to be able, when I have children, what am I going to be able to relate and, and, and provide for them because of what I'm learning and how this is impacting me right now? So it's not, that's where, going back to what Ms. Kimberly said, oh, insurance is a, it's a problem. Like, you shouldn't have that. That's because we don't have clear understanding and we don't have a realistic perspective of how it works and what it means to our day-to-day -day reality. So, again, you just want to make sure you are preventing yourself from having a negative effect that you can control. That having that credit protection gives you that option to where you can control that. Yes, ma'am? How does cancer affect any of those things? That would be the disability, a level of disability coverage. But I mean, if, you, if you're previously diagnosed when you go to purchase your home, things like that, are you able to get credit disability or credit life if you are a former cancer patient? As we've talked about, every situation is unique. However, in particular, when we're talking about having a loan debt out there and you have credit life and credit disability and you are a survivor of cancer or uh, had previously been diagnosed and you're, you're battling through it. The beauty of having those group policies that Reggie mentioned is a lot of times with your credit unions or your banks that offer that protection, you're looking at the whole group. And so because of that, you're able to insure even someone who has cancer. Now, you may have a waiting period uh, because certainly you don't want to get insurance because you know you're going to file a claim. That's just not how the law works. But you can also, as a cancer patient or a cancer survivor, still get coverage. You just may have to wait a little bit longer before a benefit will pay out. And the idea being you're not getting this coverage because you know something catastrophic is about to happen. So cancer does not automatically mean you can't get insurance. And I said cancer is a part of disability. Cancer technically is a supplemental. There is supplemental coverage you can have that will pay you 
based on, again, there's ranges of payout, but based on things that you have to have done, you can get that as well. You can get under, along the same lines of disability, there's cancer, heart, accident, hospitalization. So there's all of these additional coverages you can have. So if these things took place, it actually covers you and you will pay what I'm learning from how this is impacting me right now. So it's not, that's where, going back to what Ms. Kimberly said, our insurance is a, it's a crime, like you shouldn't have that. That's because we don't have clear understanding and we don't have a realistic perspective of how it works and what it means to our day-to-day -day reality. So, again, you just want to make sure you are preventing yourself from having a negative effect that you can control. That having that credit protection gives you that option to where you can control that. Yes, ma'am? How does cancer affect any of those things? That would be for disability, a level of disability coverage. But I mean, if, you, if you're previously diagnosed, when you go to purchase your home, things like that, are you able to get credit disability or credit life if you are a former cancer patient? As we talked about, every situation is unique. However, in particular, when we're talking about having a long debt out there and you have credit life and credit disability and you are a survivor of cancer or uh, had previously been diagnosed and you're, you're battling through it. The beauty of having those group policies that Reggie mentioned is a lot of times with your credit unions or your banks that offer that protection, you're looking at the whole group. And so because of that, you're able to insure even someone who has cancer. Now you may have a waiting period uh, because certainly you don't want to get insurance because you know you're going to file a claim. That's just not how the game works. But you can also, as a cancer patient or a cancer survivor, still get coverage. You just may have to wait a little bit longer before a benefit will pay out. And the idea being, you're not getting this coverage because you know something catastrophic is about to happen. So cancer does not automatically mean you can't get insurance. And I said cancer is a part of disability. Cancer technically is a supplemental. There is supplemental coverage you can have that will pay you Based on, again, there's ranges of payout, but based on things that you have to have done, you can get that as well. You can get under, along the same lines of disability, there's cancer, heart, accident, hospitalization. So there's all of these additional coverages you can have. So if these things took place, it actually covers you and you get paid how many days you have to stay in the treatment, where you have to, for travel. So there's a number of options that still can apply to where that can help offset. It can help get you some kind of compensation in the meantime while you're having to go through those, those procedures as well. Yeah, excellent question. Yeah, so. well, I just know that back in, back in the day, you know, when you were filling out loan paperwork, and if you had cancer, well, they just automatically said, no, you didn't qualify for credit Exactly. Mm -hmm. Those days have gone away. <laughs> yep. So keeping in mind with that, I don't think it's any mystery or surprise to any of us that Louisiana has some of the highest Period. But why do, why do insurance rates of premiums fluctuate so much? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, as Reggie mentioned earlier, talking about the risk and the, the intensity of things happening, how often things happen, the severity of what has happened, age, income, credit, <laughs> all of that plays into what your premium may or may not be. So. Um, Again, no broader statement. There's a lot of things that go into it, but I'm sure Rich has a few things to add. So, so on the on the auto side, right? So we talk, look at auto insurance. Personal example. So I lived in Virginia. I'm from here, but I moved away to Virginia. I came back to Louisiana, and my auto insurance over doubled. Yes. And and nothing. I, I I didn't do anything. Like there was nothing that I did. And I said, why? Wow, and they said, well, Louisiana is one of the top states, again, like I said, for lawsuits. So that is why it's going to, again, it's the give and take. So when an insurance company is saying, well, man, we have to pay out an awful lot. Like, if, if, if we're just looking at percentages, in Kentucky, they pay out 10% per client. Like, 10% of their clients, they, their insurers, they have to pay out 10%. And Louisiana is 32%. So again, if they're in the business of making money, somebody is going to have to offset that loss or that payout that they have. Who's going to offset it? The policy holder, the consumer, right. So that's why, that's a big reason why rates hike up. And then when 
driving history for auto, that's another one that's going to affect affect the premiums being more because they see, oh, you're more of a threat. You are more likely for us to have to pay out, so we're going to make you pay more up front. So we know we're going to get some of what we're going to have to pay out up front, so we won't have to take a big loss on the back end. So that, and, and that's pretty much across the board where if you see higher rates, it's because it's more that they're going to have to come out of pocket with, and you're going to share it. They're going to get, they're going to recover some of that. So they expect you to help. You're going to pay for that, unfortunately. So remember when I told you we could talk about hours from insurance and finance? We could go really, really deep, but we won't for the sake of time. Yes, I saw my five minute mark. So do we have any questions? Any more questions? Yes. How can you help my questions? Um, Thank you for talking about disability. I probably submitted what you think. Because I work with teachers in two different states. And I was very appalled recently in a different state when asking a question when you're talking about disability insurance. And probably 90% of the responses that I got to a particular question said Social Security. That, and what, so what I'm going to ask you for is, is there a place where I can go to get some general information because I was also appalled when I looked it up that the government has decided to call its, you know, uh, complete disability, disability insurance, which really just muddies the water. So I'm looking for a resource that could be used in a classroom someplace that clearly spells out the difference between a government benefit versus insurance, but you're choosing your premiums for them. And so if you come across anything, send it to us, and I will be happy to disseminate it. Well, I do know by virtue of you being a part of the Louisiana Jumpstart, there are a lot of resources they can point you to for classroom material and even personal learning to understand the distinction between the two. I did pass out a couple of these little flyers. This is from my organization, uh, Community Control Group. And if you can go to our website, truesage.com, and we have some basic de definitions and information about the different insurances that will help you more on a personal level, but it may also give you a few talking points for your classroom. But definitely make sure you consult with Louisiana Jumpstart because there are a lot of different resources they can point you to for teaching materials. Yep, and I was thinking back to saying the same thing. It's, it's probably, um, so how do you recognize a counterfeit bill by knowing what a real dollar bill looks like. So it's on a, like what you're saying about a personal level, knowing the difference. And then that would be for the individual teacher, unfortunately. There's not a, a clear cookie cutter that I've seen yet that is, this is what social security income disability is, this is what disability itself is, and mainly because there's so many variations of what disability is and how a company will make it available. So and it's an individual long-term, short-term, there's a range of them. So that's where you'll be looking at knowing those breakdowns and then the onus would be on that teacher probably or that administrator to make it clear for their, for their sphere of influence so that they would know what the breakdown would between the two would be, unfortunately. Well, I'll keep checking on that and I'll, I'll pass along what I find out and I'm sure they'll announce that. <laughs> I think we have one here and then I'll give it a number. I just wanted to make a comment while you were talking about putting insurance on your credit cards. Well, when my sister passed away, she had insurance on a credit card. So instead of the family having to pay those debts, that insurance paid those bills off. So I, because of that, I'm, I've always put it on there. But it certainly helps, if you, especially if you're married. You don't want to leave your, your family with that burden or your credit cards and having to pay those bills. Absolutely. Good point. Thank you. Was there somebody here that had a question on this side? When students graduate and they say they're on their own and they're going to pay for school, is there a suggestion you have? I mean, their parents are saying, um, for health, health benefits and things like that for health insurance, are the programs up to the schools they can get or they get a product? I don't know how that works. I would ask. Typically, the universities will have some level of coverage that the students can start to get on their own. 
the beautiful thing is the parents can carry the student. I think it's either 26 or up to 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. There may be some ways that them as a student can all get that covered. Thank you. You're welcome for your question. I think our time's up. Let's give Ms. Kimberly Plant and Ms. Richard for a few minutes.